Once more, good evening everyone and welcome to Revitalizing the AEC Industry with Next Generation Workflows. And before we begin, I would like to invite everyone to join our Revit, Autodesk Revit community. It's Autodesk Revit Philippines commenting down the link for you to join. Also, we are an advocate of building information modeling, inviting you all to join us in BIM Philippines, our parent community, Autodesk Community Philippines. And once more, encouraging everyone to register. Um, before we end the live stream, we will be raffling away subscription to LinkedIn Learning. So here showing you some of uh, the courses about Revit in LinkedIn Learning. So here I am seeing they have 96 courses for you to learn and master Revit. And of course, LinkedIn Learning is not only has Revit courses, but everything with regards to business, creativity, and technology. Okay? And without further ado, let me now bring in our uh, sharer this evening. Let's say hi and welcome to Sagar Torat. Okay, and in addition, requesting everyone to connect with me via LinkedIn. Same also to Sagar if you have comments and questions. Later, I'll be sharing this uh, free course to everyone, to all of my connections. It's Revit 2022 Essential Training for Architecture. Okay, and without further ado, let me add in our knowledge sharer this evening. Let's say hi and good evening to Sagar, finally. Hello. Hey, hi. How are you? Uh, you can see my screen, right? Yep, we're seeing your slides. And before you begin, <laughs> let's warm sure. things up. Um, uh, this live yeah. stream has an audience of students as well. So everyone is curious why you took architecture. <laughs> okay. So uh, I was about to take civil engineering. So I had two, two exams to give, right? So my father is a civil engineer. And uh, the day uh, I, I went for this entrance exam, the architecture entrance exam. And uh, I was also inspired to become a civil engineer at the same time. So whichever exam I passed and got a good college, I got into it. But my sheer passion was for the building industry. It may be architecture or civil engineering. Uh, ultimately, uh, I had to choose uh, one of the two. And I chose architecture due to uh, I got higher marks and hence could enter a better school at that time. Awesome. Uh, someone here is asking as well, where are you currently located? I'm right now in uh, Singapore, One North Singapore in the Autodesk headquarters here for APAC, our Asia Pacific headquarters in Autodesk. Awesome, awesome. So, yep, to our participants, encouraging everyone uh, to ask, to ask questions, to comment your questions down. So let's make this uh, conversational as well. So without further ado, take it away, uh, Sagar. We're seeing your slides now. All right. So, uh, welcome everybody. So, I'm Sagar Thurat and uh, most of you might have already seen my profile. If not, um, I'm a master's in architectural engineering from the Netherlands and uh, I have uh, around 13 years of experience in the AEC industry in different fields. Uh, some of the key projects that I've worked on is uh, Changi Jewel Airport and also Paya Liba Quartier. Uh, Disney, Shanghai, uh, Tron Park, and also in uh, Bandar Kurla Complex, Mumbai Convention Centers. So these are some of the key projects that I've worked on other than Germany, Netherlands, and USA also. There are some other projects. So I've enjoyed my journey so far, being an architect and also an engineer at the same time. So that's a beautiful thing to know because you uh, by by doing two degrees you definitely understand more i mean not really necessary to do a degree but even if you have a small diploma engineering knowledge will always help you to do better architecture and that's something which i really love about uh, being both 
So uh, before we move, I would encourage everybody, including the students and all the professionals that have joined today to participate in the Revit Public Roadmap. The Revit Public Roadmap, uh, if you type into Google, you should be able to find the Revit Ideas Forum where you can submit an idea. Uh, you, when you submit an idea, it goes into the our product teams and the technical managers and product teams, they evaluate. And further, that feature is pushed into our roadmap. And the roadmap is live. Even now, if you Google, you can go to this link. Uh, actually, if you just type Revit Public Roadmap Trello, you log into Trello, and this is the live roadmap. So these are the features that you will see in the upcoming uh, versions. And also what has been uh, newly added to Revit is also over here. So please uh, feel free to directly log in your requests. And also, it's a democratic process. So do not forget to vote for your favorite features. The more the votes, the feature will be popping into your next version immediately, right? So higher the votes, it gets a priority by the product development team. So this is very important. Uh, Revit, as we know, has more than 20 million users around the world. And uh, it's it's uh, the most popular BIM tool and the most diverse in terms of mechanical engineering, plumbing, architecture, uh, generator design, and so on. And that's what we'll be discussing today. The evolution of Revit, and today we have 2023 as the version. Uh, we will be looking into design productivity, simulation, and analysis, the impact that Revit has on interoperability, cloud and data, uh, design optimization and documentation efficiency. So let's dig into design productivity as a first. So when you look at design, uh, people understand design as only architectural design, but Revit focuses on a multidisciplinary approach. And hence it is important that we not only do the concept architectural design, but also look at it from a structural design perspective, MEP design perspective, and how 3D modeling can help you design better buildings, more cohesive and more multidisciplinary buildings. Hence, we'll be looking at some of these features, um, some being newly added and some being enhanced. And uh, these are uh, things that you must look out for as well. So many of you know that uh, this has been a challenge for many years of a concept design tool that is very well linked with the BIM tool and uh, with format. Um, you can now actually design integrated um, integrated sketch-based 3D intuitive modeling with Revit directly, right? The 3D sketch feature, for example, inside Format was first introduced uh, back in Revit 2022, and that enables you to launch a Format session right inside Revit. So let's uh, understand it immediately. So see how Format works very well with Revit. So... You can see, for example, here the 3D sketch feature, first which was introduced in uh, Revit 2022, uh, enables you to launch a format session from Revit. And uh, it translates the Revit elements as a context geometry into format, right? Straight away. And you can import any new format design study back into Revit. Now, this is important. For example, in this case, we have added this bicycle stand. And you can straight away import this as a Revit family from format. And this is something very important. It is brought in as a Revit uh, and linked file instead of a CAD import. And it streamlines your workflow and the round trip. You can send to Revit preview mode and you can enable the preview mode setting and format and select those layers that will transfer to Revit as well. So the bottom line is your experience as a designer is now improved through this 3D sketch feature and you're able to launch a format session right from Revit, open it, do the necessary editing. And after your sketch is edited, you can right away update it in your Revit model. How cool is that, right? So this is something which we would have seen impossible three or four years ago, because normally the concept design tools run by their own, and they do not have any connections with the, three, uh, the BIM modeling tools. And here is a connection where today it's possible for you to combine the power of sketching, uh, power of concept design with uh, the power of building information modeling 
in one single workflow as part of the AC collection, Format Pro is offered uh, within the AC collection. So it's directly integrated. Right. We have also introduced uh, Revit levels inside Format. Now, this is uh, one of the crucial things because uh, levels is everything. Without a level, you really can't build a building. And uh, hence, to improve that workflow, we are able to allow further exploration in format using the Revit geometry as your background context and apply the imported level data to a new geometry inside format using format level palettes to display gross area and the volume calculations. So immediately after you create your volume, you can apply the levels and you can see that immediately the gross volume areas can be accessed over here. So again, a very tightly integrated concept design workflow, which you can uh, enhance you know, further. Uh, so right as part of the AC collection, as you've already seen as part of the video, the AC collection is enabling workflows, which people cannot imagine uh, they were possible uh, three or four or five years ago, because today these tools have grown so well, especially Revit, BIM 360, Format, and the connection of Dynamo takes it to the next level where all these tools can be tightly integrated and you can uh, take advantage of having so many different um, technologies into one single collection and enable the, your workflows for the future. Now, we have added some enhancements such as now you can measure in 3D. Uh, normally, measuring in 3D is related to the collaboration tools Within BIM tools, it is quite difficult to measure in 3D, but within Revit, you are able to measure quite well inside 3D as well. And uh, also the anti-aliasing properties have been improved quite a lot. You can straight away start measuring inside 3D and you can lock the measurements. Uh, you can now snap to any 3D position without any plane restrictions, right? And you're able to measure the shortest distance to the target plane or line by activating the perpendicular snap. There's a perpendicular snap, which you can enable. Right. So we do understand that normally the CAD models and BIM models, when you have to interoperate them well, you always face a challenge. Uh, but in this case, we have added certain uh, categories to your cuttable geometry. So we are able to actually cut this geometry in your views, such as the 3D family parameters, or 3D families like furniture systems, caseworks, specialty equipment, plumbing fixtures, all of these now you can actually get inside your Revit family and make it a cuttable, enable cutting of that family in a particular view. So for example, now when once I apply and load it back into the project, you will now be able to cut that geometry. You can see as the cutting plane moves in plan, you're now able to cut that cooking range right in there. And you can see how the cutting display updates very beautifully. So this enhances your design to documentation workflows very effectively. Now moving from architectural design, we will come back to architectural design later with Dynamo and generative design, but we will look at some design productivity features for structural engineers. Structural engineers and structural designers, structural modelers, can now uh, model their uh, couplers geometry and align with the bars and the rebars end as well. And when rotating the coupler, this is the default position normally. So for freeform rebar, the default position of the coupler is parallel to the host surface. So the surface to which it is hosted, it will be parallel to that. To create this com complex geometry and display it in the realistic way in 2D views, you can edit the coupler family and, un and uncheck the align to view options. So these new features help structural engineers and detailers create highly detailed reinforcement models and documentation. One of the game changing feature that has been launched into the BIM world this year has been the adaptive propagation of rebar, which actually uh, uses machine learning algorithms. So let's look at it. So the 2023 is the first time this has been introduced 
And this is a very major implication. When you're working on a design that has similar concrete elements, you can quickly and accurately copy the shape-driven rebar from one concrete host to another concrete host. And these concrete host elements need not be identical for the newly created bars to match their new host. Let's say if you have a column which is 600 by 600, but you can apply the same reinforcement configuration to a 900 by 900 column, it'll copy. Similarly, shear walls can also be copied. So this, I believe, is a game changer for the 3D modeling of rebar, and it is going to enable faster modeling, faster update, and design decisions can be taken in a, in, in a much intuitive way, and uh, faster workflows are possible now. You can see how you can copy a configuration from one shear wall to another shear wall, and the reinforcement adapts itself. This is where the machine learning algorithm is working in the back end. So there you go. People have been questioning, has AI been included in Revit? This is your AI, and you will see more of this. This is probably one of the first features which actually uses machine learning algorithms to propagate detailing into your concrete elements. So, is it, so go ahead, try this out, and it's going to be fun to really try this out. Design is becoming more fun now, right? So. Uh, let's say in this case, for example, for a curved ramp, if you would like to model your reinforcement and you can even duplicate it to the same ramp upstairs and uh, quickly to the next level, you select the particular host. Uh, important to have minimum at least two planes for the host. Yeah, you can simply select the rebar, right? And uh, for the complex surfaces, you are now able to propagate the reinforcement from one ramp to another ramp by simply selecting it. How cool is that? So these are some things which, 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 which are for the designers of today and for the designers of tomorrow, and hence the next generation workflows are BIM-based workflows, which are driven by machine learning algorithms. Now let's look uh, what we do have from, for MEP design. Uh, we have all, Revit has been one of the most popular tools for MEP designers and engineers, um, and it has enabled fabrication as well. So looking into the future of how this design and fabrication will come together is, for example, uh, enabling uh, flip controls for fabrication parts. We think that it is a, a small enhancement, but think, think about it when you're designing your systems. And if you have kilometers of uh, routing of plumbing or MEP, it will be easier for you to model and faster if you have flip controls, you have elevation controls for the particular fabrication parts related to MEP segments and MEP uh, fittings and also uh, equipments in this case. So we will have a quick check. Um, and we'll, we'll look at a video quickly on how this uh, is enabling. So for example, in this case, we can um, select this particular part. So this is a valve. It could be a valve or it could be a duct fitting and it could also be a segment in between. So you can see that flip control, the half arrow, which is mirrored. You can now use those to flip your uh, geometry and you're able to change, connect. Let's say in this case, you have your elevation, which is changed and you can now route and fill this particularly and connect it. Smart snapping is now enabled and you can now connect and create this segmentation piece in between. So these flip controls and elevation controls will enable faster uh, design to modeling and will enable designers to move much more faster in the process. So model performance, we have always looked at how you can improve your model performance, especially when the BIM data populates and continues to develop throughout the concept, scheme, LOD 200, detailed design, LOD 300. And then as you move into LOD 350, 400, the models could be really heavy. So now uh, with, with the newer and the upgraded versions of Revit, you can see that the unload and reload links would be up to 20% faster because the algorithms are working in the back end to, to, to sort of um, calculate this intelligence and try to remove any roadblocks uh, as part of your workflows. 
So performance has significantly improved uh, in Revit 2023 with many elements selected. The display is improved by reducing in canvas controls and providing tools to display the legacy behaviors such as pinning and unpinning of uh, lots of elements, right? So this was quite a pain. Uh, I've suffered quite a lot, this one together with my team, uh, when we have to work with a very large amounts of models. So now you can see, for example, you can either show these controls when you're work sharing or you cannot, or you don't have to show them at all. So which means you, you, you're completely getting rid of a big roadblock for you to move ahead while you're selecting large amounts of data in your model. So additional performance, UI optimization, UI components were optimized, reducing unnecessary background graphics. And you will see that the performance of Revit uh, when you're linking DWG files or you're copying large number of elements has improved significantly in the newer versions of Revit. All right, so moving from here, uh, it's a, we'll move into simulation and analysis. I might skip some parts just in the um, interest of time, but there, there is an enhanced uh, solar study dialogue box added. Uh, please go ahead and try it out. You can now better visualize the impact of sunlight and shadows. Uh, we should be able to see it through this video demonstration. So you can now use uh, natural daylight conditions. You can have solar studies. Uh, you can play with the timing of the day. And this solar study panel will enable you to get uh, the information that you need for your design quite rapidly. For example, you can even play your study here. Uh, the next frame has been added and the previous frame where you can actually do it intuitively. And, and in a much better way. The play in loop has also added been has also been added. So these are some of the enhancements that have been done in terms of the solar study. So I'm not sure how many people are aware of this, but route analysis tools have gotten an improvement since the Revit 22 uh, versions. As you can see, you can now uh, select a particular element. In this case, you can uh, select what is the distance from one road to another road, uh, to, to another door, sorry. So in case of fire escape, if, you, if you'd like to, let's say, uh, choose which path is better for fire escape. So below you can see the options P1 and P2. So P1 is 18 meters and it will take 13.8 seconds for the person to reach that particular location. Whereas P2 is about 24 meters and it's going to take 18.4 seconds and so on. So overall, you are able to take informed decisions when you are placing your doors, fire escape staircases and preparing for your fire strategy. So these are some of the tools that enable the workflows that architects were requesting for, for MEP designers were requesting for. Now let's take a sneak peek into the future. Uh, we Autodesk um, recently acquired a company called Spacemaker, and uh, this is what we call as Urban AI. It's the data science of architecture and planning. So using uh, machine learning algorithms and again, cognitive intelligence, you are able to run wind analysis, sun analysis, daylight uh, views within Spacemaker. And the best part is that Space <laughs> Spacemaker will uh, be able to send in uh, send the models to Revit. So the beta Revit add-in for Spacemaker is already being launched. So you should be able to test Spacemaker if anybody is interested. Uh, this is still in beta right now, especially for the ASEAN region. And uh, you are able to test it out. So Spacemaker can be used for urban designs. You can design a plot of land uh, understand the floor area ratio, uh, setbacks, open spaces, wind analysis, and you can design right in context. And then uh, through the Revit add-in, you can push this design, which can then be exported to Revit. You can send it to Revit. You can download the Revit add-in and install it. And then you can send this information to Revit further to, uh, to take, it, take the model from a 
level of detail 100 to 200 and from 200 to 300 further once you have done your urban design. So this is what you will get, let's say starting from next year, but uh, Space Maker is something which will change the um, change urban design and together with BIM integration, this is going to be a game changer for, for uh, many people. Many of our customers are looking forward to Space Maker being available in ASEAN, but I wanted to give you this uh, sneak preview today that there is a beta add-in so if anybody is interested to test the beta add-in for Revit for SpaceMaker, go ahead and uh, test out SpaceMaker for yourselves as well. So what this enables for the future is a workflow where you can design your concepts for urban design in SpaceMaker, take it to Revit, and from Revit, take it to 3ds Max for great visualization. And again, as part of the EC collection, you have Revit and 3ds Max both in one single solution. Embedded carbon apps, uh, sustainability, uh, and also carbon tax has been increasing uh, and is planned to be increasing in many countries. So this is becoming quite a relevant and important topic now. Architects and engineers cannot ignore uh, embedded carbon. And this calculation can be enabled and data can be extracted from your Revit model through various apps uh, in multiple regions. Uh, we have EC3 uh, as an app uh, by buildingtransparency.com uh, and that pulls Revit models through BIM 360 or you have one-click LCA for Revit. Uh, mostly for ANZ customers, this is used. It's developed very specific to some locations, but the Dynamo package uh, is something which is also available and people are exploring. I mean, every region is actually exploring multiple ways to extract embedded carbon information with, that is linked with Revit models, Revit quantities, and Revit uh, properties of materials, and so on. So have a look at this AU class from Bureau Happold. Um, it, 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 it explores a unique workflow that uses uh, Revit and Dynamo, and then pulls the data into um, EC3 and pushes the objects back to Revit with their embedded carbon information. For structural design, uh, we will go through the latest workflow that has been improved significantly. So we understand that the development of a structural analytical model is an essential step in a structural engineer's BIM process. And this model is often used in collaborative workflows across engineering teams. For many years, uh, Revit has offered features for structural analytical modeling. However, Structural engineers are looking for more flexibility and control over their analytical modeling process, particularly for complex structures, as this will enable fully bidirectional workflows between Revit and analysis software. To that end, Revit 2023 introduces a completely new approach to structural analytical modeling. As before, you can leverage existing physical geometry in 2D and 3D views, as context for the analytical model. The analytical model still remains associated to the physical geometry, but is now independent, providing you with the benefits of speed and accuracy in model creation while protecting the analytical model. Uh, when modeling the analytical elements, you can now assign uh, their structural role, type, profile, shape, and define their cross-sectional rotation and specify how these elements should be analyzed. To keep track of the relationships between physical and analytical model elements, you can easily associate them to each other. And once this is done, uh, the associated elements are highlighted upon selection as well. So this should be, uh, engineers will benefit from the improved efficiency and accuracy and flexibility while developing analytical models for their structure designs. Further, there is a whole new workflow for structural analysis. So for example, when starting a project from scratch, you can focus exclusively on analytical modeling, just like you would do in traditional analysis softwares like STAD, ETABS, and so on. In Revit, analytical elements are fully parametric and are associated with grids and levels. 
enabling you to control elemental positioning and using these datum levels, right? You can copy them to the upper levels very easily and they can easily create representations for any type of structure, buildings, bridges, frames, pavilions, stairs, and more. Uh, structure engineers can create consistent analytical models and they can create consistent models with the preferred engineering approach. Uh, they can enable structural analysis jobs from Revit models. They can even create multiple analytical models for a single physical representation and consider various analysis approaches simultaneously as well. So this new capability will enable engineers to drive analytical central workflows for their projects. All right, so uh, moving on, uh, steel connections and their design has been improved and automated through the Dynamo plan, right? So let's look at uh, this example now. So the Revit 2023 adds library-based steel connection design automation features. You can model your design intent faster and embed structural engineering and fabrication rules to reduce iterations. Uh, sample rules are provided for placing steel connections and uh, you can base those on predefined ranges of applicability. These are found in the steel connection automation player and simply search for by range to filter out uh, those like you can filter by range. An important fact uh, to remember is that all structural members can leverage information stored inside the analytical elements, right? So you may use the member end forces dialog, this member end forces dialog uh, to specify internal forces and moments or steel connections as well, right? So this is going to enable a whole new workflow for automation of structural connections as well. Uh, rules for each type of steel connections are used to place them based on relevant criteria such as profile sizes and steel grades and capable internal forces as well. These rules in tandem with preferred libraries can be used as well. So in 2023, uh, Revit includes sample steel connection libraries to support some regional standards. Uh, these libraries are customizable enabling you to adjust and extend them to meet your local or regional requirements as well. So the new library-based steel connection design automation features will enable designers and steel structure modelers more quickly and accurately to do the custom uh, detailing inside Revit as well. So there has been a new enhancement, or let's say new addition inside 2023 Revit, which will enable you to do preliminary load calculations inside it. So you can define equipment loads, you can define boundary areas or area-based loads, and you can specify power density, load classification, power factor, and apparent power density for area-based loads. Uh, you can create an analytical power distribution system with the system browser as well. These analysis tools will ena enable you to define boundary areas for area-based loads and equipment loads as well. So, uh, a favorite topic for many people, interoperability has been uh, quite critical and especially in recent times with uh, so many softwares popping into the market and trying to compete, it has become even more important that IFC interoperability has, has to be enhanced. And hence, Autodesk has always been at the forefront and it has moved interoperability forward always and always supporting our customers with the best interoperability engines. So, for example, in 1994, uh, Autodesk had co-founded the International Alliance for Interoperability, which was then in 2005, uh, it became Building Smart. So Building Smart, which was initially in 1994, was called International Alliance for Interoperability. 
and further in between 2008 and 10 autodesk launched further interoperability uh, file formats such as stl export in revit and it released an open source stl plugin between 2011 and 2013 ifc standards were integrated into a360 and bim360 cloud solutions and from there we also um, added a kobe extension for revit after that uh, in 2013 2016 ifc 4 was released and integrated into revit uh, before of course the certifications were launched at a later stage and uh, we also launched the kobe kobe extension for navisworks now uh, in 2020 autodesk joined the open design alliance and then from there a new revolution of let's say the ifc sdk with revit has begun the Navisworks SDK has begun. A lot of interoperability is now getting driven due to Autodesk joining the Open Design Alliance. The IFC4 certification for Revit and architecture and structure and MEP has also been acquired. And Autodesk today offers more than 14 softwares, which include your Inventor, AutoCAD, Civil 3D, Revit. All of these softwares today are fully capable of collaborating with IFC procedures. So very important to understand that uh, Autodesk is behind its customers and it's enabling these workflows right. It's almost been 30 years now, 30, 32 years since we have enabled these workflows. And we are looking into the future now. And the future is even more open. And we are enabling these open IFC workflows. For example, this year, we launched the IFC export as uh, container attribute values can be added over here. There are new built-in IFC attributes for all models and the IFC export as feature or the uh, export utility has been added. So let's have a quick look at that. Um, Autodesk, the Revit models are fully certified IFC imports and exports. It, Revit is fully certified on building smart IFC data exchange, not only for architecture, but for structure and MEP. Uh, the following built-in IFC attributes have been added as an instance parameter for every type of a, uh, element. System families as well as normal uh, Revit families, such as the IFC predefined type, export as an IFC GUIT. Right? So a new export mapping dialog allows you to select an IFC schema and search for a specific IFC container, an element, and predefined type, and then apply those values to elements in your model. The same dialog is used to control the entities included in your IFC exports. The bottom line is the improved integrity for your IFC data exchanges across your projects with these IFC enhancements in Revit 2023. Uh, the IFC ODA toolkit was updated. It was incorporate. Uh, it it incorporates the Open Design Alliance IFC SDK toolkit. It supports the interoperability of large IFC models and provides improved performance for complex geometries. This is quite critical. It's a major upgrade, especially in terms of curved geometry inputs. All right. Perhaps uh, this topic would be the favorite for many designers, especially architects. But we are not just looking at architectural designers. We're looking at structural and, and MEP designers as well. And how you can automate your designs in Revit is something which uh, we have been doing for the last 10 years or so. Uh, I think Dynamo was there since 2013, but it only matured in 2016. So let's have a quick look at how design and the softwares have been evolving. So in the beginning, of course, AutoCAD, which enabled traditional design recording decisions through 2D documentation. Then when Revit was launched in 2002, 2003, when Autodesk acquired it and it became more matured in 2005, 2006, it enabled parametric design through associative geometry and we also called it as bi-directional associativity. If you remember the terminology, association between 2D and 3D and direct integration. 
further design automation began the journey in design automation 2013 2015 2016 it matured and visual programming connected with bim was introduced right we have seen a lot of disconnected visual programming tools out there which are not connected with bim softwares but here the industry leveraged on this opportunity and dynamo really exploded the use of dynamo has exploded and today it's become very normal for architects and engineers to visually program they don't need any coding language so they can visually program and use computational design to their advantage and further in recent years autodesk has been investing and moving forward with generative design on taking the computational bim to the next level which is more intelligent where you can describe goals and constraints and include machine learning algorithms to give you more design options through project refinery in revit right so it's not in isolation dynamo and refinery are actually just extensions within revit so further let's have a quick look at two examples of design automation and how dynamo has changed the game let's say the upper uh, example is to apply a quick interior finishing to all uh, all the walls at the same time and the below option shows you that how you can automate from 2d drawings you can automatically create walls right so these are two workflows which are driving almost up to 50% of increase in efficiency for geometry and calculation and time savings of massive uh, of of enormous uh, amounts of time saving to convert a 2d drawing automatically into walls is something which people have been looking at it for ages but dynamo enabled it and uh, democratized the use of computational bim because uh, dynamo is open source right you know it's it's evolved through github and uh, scripts are available everywhere so it's sort of a democratic process of design all right so moving into the generative design enhancements and what dynamo player has got into and how the dynamo player and the project refinery which is your generative design are now very consistent uh, interfaces to each other and hence it's more intuitive and much better for designers so let's have a look at how this works so for example uh, you can enjoy the added flexibility with new input types and better clarity so the defined study dialog box you can see on the right hand side uh, supports several input types you can create your own studies you can now enter number of inputs you can also use a slider with a number you can just add in a number or you can see you can actually have this rotation sliders instead of using the uh, the visual programming language this is an interface where you simply enter values and you see your design getting updated so you can browse and access a directory path or a file path as an input in the study dialog there is no need to define it in the dynamo script the dynamo script works in the back end right and you can also use text inputs and true and false toggles right so true and false toggles have also been introduced uh, the define study dialog box provides new descriptions and thumbnails in the method drop down to help you choose the proper method for your study and the cross product method has been renamed as space evenly to represent better how input data is combined with with every parameter in a study the dynamo player user interface has been made consistent with the generative design in the revit user interface ui making the use of both tools more intuitively and using the dynamo player to automate tasks in revit and use generative design to explore multiple solutions to a particular design problem so this is something which will help uh, designers to explore multiple options in their design workflows right so ultimately the goal of this is that designers are able to design faster take informed decisions and they are able to drive better productivity
through automated design. So there have been more than 79 nodes added in the last two years. These nodes are very specific to annotation nodes, sheet nodes, view nodes, uh, automation of ceiling design nodes, and multiple nodes have been added in the last two years. Just to have, uh, just, just to look at a quick example of an optioneering study for floor area ratio, like on the right hand side, you're actually uh, giving some inputs such as the offset of the plaza. For example, the outputs of the facade area you would like to minimize or maximize. Uh, you can add up to nine options. You can do the population size per meter square. You can edit all these parameters and you can explore these nine options, for example, and multiple building options will be generated in front of you, which will show you the facade area, the total floors and floor to area ratios. Based upon these design parameters, uh, based upon floor variance, based upon the number of floors, right? You will have these various options and you can choose the best that suits your design needs, aesthetic needs, and hence you can send this directly to Revit and materialize it into a LOD 200 model so that you can take your generative design into actual building information modeling from there. How cool is that? I mean, this wasn't possible probably two to three years ago, but now the user interface is consistent. There are more nodes and there is much better generative design. And we, we also have a few examples to show you is uh, this complex surface. Uh, it could be a roof, it could be a facade, it could be a canopy, it doesn't matter. Ultimately, what matters is that you should be able to design such canopies, not just design them, but to, to be able to build them and analyze the buildability of such surfaces. In this case, we can analyze the curvature or the bending radius of the panels. Like you can see these red panels, right? These are literally the panels which are not possible through normal bending. You would have to do heat bending and you can't bend them in place. You probably have to curve this glass and you're able to see different options uh, based upon certain constructability criteria. Like you have these six options and uh, based upon different directions of bendability and hence you're able to look at these and choose the best option which is more cost effective. Yeah. So this is how you can enhance complex architecture, design it and build it at the same time. So this refinery option with the fewest panels, which is 91 panels, has a size variance, which is too large and hence you can understand. And the other uh, option has one additional panel, but meets all of the required criteria for fabrication. And hence, this is the best suitable uh, option for you. Hence, you can go ahead and detail it further. Now, we have spoken about architectural design for generative design, but even structural engineers can use Dynamo, Dynamo Player, generative design to their advantage to design, let's say, steel roof structures, to design, uh, to do analytical models, to design rebar for complex shapes. There are multiple possibilities that Dynamo and Project Refinery enable users, right? Remember, Dynamo Player and Project Refinery. These are two tools that can change your game completely. You might not need to do physical modeling anymore. Everything can be done through the computational design interface and the generative design interface. All right, so uh, maybe the last two topics for today would be in the range of design documentation efficiency and uh, we'll look into cloud and data. Before this, uh, Nomad, could you, could you confirm that I'm still audible? I just don't want to speak and nobody's hearing me. Yeah, loud and clear. All right, perfect. Yeah, good to do a check in between, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, all right, great. So let's continue. Now, how much time do I have? Uh, do I have 20 more minutes? Um, you have uh, one hour to go. Okay, so then I can <laughs> take it slow then. Yeah, all right. 
So we will look at design documentation and efficiency. The next topics will be around cloud and data. And we will look at uh, the evolution of design collaboration in Revit. So stay tuned. Uh, we have 30 to 40 more minutes to go from my side then in that case. Okay. So moving on, uh, how the evolution into documentation has taken place. I mean, we do see that people's expectations in terms of documentations are high and they are still migrating from the 2D world to the BIM world and expecting that the flexibility in 2D documentation is given as part of the BIM process as well. So we are getting closer, but it's going to be <laughs> a long road to get to the best possible documentation. However, Revit is highly matured and now getting even more matured in terms of dealing with documentation. So let's have a look at uh, how this floor, this feature might impact your uh, process, documentation process. So when you modify a flat floor with uh, shape editing tools, you can now add points or split lines to divide the surface into sub-regions that slope independently. Yeah? These have independent slopes. And in Revit 2023, the flow category includes a new folding lines and split lines subcategory. This has been added. Uh, this will enable you to control the visibility of these sloping subregion boundaries. And these new subcategories reveal the interior edges also. You can also convert folding lines into split lines with a new convert lines button on the shape editing panel of the modify floors contextual tab. And note that the folding lines can be converted to split lines and a folding line converted into a split line can be converted back by deleting the split line as well. Yeah, you can delete the split line and hence you can convert it back. So control the display for your floor very well and you're able to enable this uh, display which not only folds but also displays it in your documentation as well. Very effective. All right, so this will help you especially when you're designing ramps, you're designing around the edges of the building. Uh, this was challenging before, but now it has improved. Further, people have asked this for uh, quite some time. And this was one of the top features that was added in the newer version of Revit. So for example, in a Revit schedule, uh, or a schedule is normally used to display a customized list of elements and the parameters that exist within your project. So schedules are powerful tools in that they uh, they are live, they are non-graphical, uh, and they have a lot of data that you would like to use. Uh, schedules now can be dragged and dropped into the sheets, much like any other view. And uh, Revit 2023 adds a new capability to schedules that enables them to detect and display only those project elements that are relevant to the schedule that exist in other views placed on the same sheet. So it will not unnecessarily give you the information for the whole project, but only focus on the drawing. Let's say it's ground floor, then it's ground floor. First floor, then it's first floor. If it's a particular part of the building, it's a particular part of the building. Then automatically your schedule also gets revised. Isn't it beautiful, right? So the information and the data, again, this is something which is machine learning and it's not possible without AI. So for the people who have been questioning Revit's AI and machine learning capabilities and the automation capabilities, here you go. Uh, and now you can use these workflows to your advantage, right? So uh, this is something which was asked by many uh, people and as you know, uh, Revit could already be used for 3D displaced views, which is quite a popular tool for people who would like to do very good documentation. But now you can adjust the position of an element in a 2D view to help other project participants, uh, participants view it more clearly and better understand the design intent. So this can be enabled in 2D views, including callouts and section views as well. So the displace view can be done just like product design and manufacturing. 
the 2D view disassemble can be utilized in Revit as well. So we are moving into a direction where Revit is also getting enabled into the DFMA world where the documentation will also become more product centric, manufacturing centric, which the new generation will request more and more. Again, you can even displace and tag displaced elements, right? In uh, Revit 2023, the tag feature has been enabled for these displaced elements. So once you displace this element, you may tag the element before or after the displacement. And if you displace an element that has been tagged previously, the tag will move with the element. So this is beautiful. And that's, that's, that's going to help you uh, present your designs uh, properly, explain it for constructability, and take your uh, communication to a whole new level in your meetings. And design coordination meetings can use this feature as well. In the latest versions of Revit, you would see that the uh, anti-aliasing or the curvature properties and the way 3D rebars or curved surfaces are presented in the 3D view has improved significantly. The view as solid property is what we call it in the view visibility states has been removed. And in this dialogue, you cannot toggle the unobscured property for multiple selected rows. And you can use the spacebar to do it. It's, it's very easy to use. But this, you can also avoid clashes with rebars as they're presented in solid 3D views of link models as well. So this is going to help you quite a lot to navigate through your rebar models. So uh, one of the um, key features that we see in the MEP design is where uh, it, it improves now the handling of demolished MEP elements and their systems. Uh, elements now maintain their system connection and information in the demolished phase. So this is where design phases and the model geometry can sync and uh, you can control it together. In the previous releases, MEP objects did not stay connected in the demolished phase. And the system information such as system name, abbreviation and classification parameters was discarded. Uh, various workarounds were needed, but in Revit 2023, your MEP elements will stay connected when assigned to the demolished phase. And these demolished objects will now, uh, these demolished objects will maintain their system name, the abbreviation, and the classification parameters, and your components will stay connected to each other, even though they were demolished, but you can reinstate them as well, right? So there have been uh, view filter enhancements. Uh, this might look simple, but in a large, complex, mixed-use building model, this might be quite helpful, right? So this is where you can see that you can actually use the view filter to your advantage. So let's say in this case for wall switch, the second the switch wall. Sorry, yeah. So for example, you, when you model your wall in Revit and you use the sweep tool. You can now, for example, uh, filter. You can add this filter and the sweeps will be included and uh, should be able to add a filter name to this. And then uh, with walls, the wall sweeps can be selected and you should be able to attach a particular filter into, uh, as in color for this as well. So that will display the sweeps in a different color so that you are able to identify them in a large project, there might be a lot of sweeps that you might want to look at as well. Uh, also, the base and top constraints. Uh, this, again, is something where you can create a filter for. And say, for example, for walls, we now have a base constraint filter. Uh, so these are new rules which have been added to the filter and a top constraint filter has been added. So multiple new rules for filter have been added. And this can be done, let's say in this case, you can suit it to a particular floor, right? So all the walls on that floor can now uh, have a quick solid color identified. 
So in this case, green color, you can apply and you can see that all the second floor walls have a different color now. So one more cool feature, which is my favorite feature actually, this is uh, swap your views. So in previous releases of Revit, uh, replacing a view on a sheet required you to first delete the existing place view. Uh, Revit 2023 makes it easier to swap views on a sheet. To swap a view currently placed on a sheet with the compatible view, you can select the existing view and navigate to the positioning and view contextual panel on the ribbon. Right. So the viewport positioning parameter is saved for each viewport and that determines how the view is positioned when swapped. So the position is recorded, the scale is recorded and you can select the viewport center to use the center of the viewport as a reference or a view origin and the view list is searchable and filters the list of all compatible views. Uh, views already placed on a sheet are appended and uh, you can see them replaced with the same uh, center and as well replace them easily. Right. So if you attempt to replace a view with another view already placed on the same sheet, Revit will alert you with a pop up dialog that you saw that displays that it has already been used somewhere. So this will improve your documentation uh, significantly and you'll be able to move swift between sheets and views. In the last project, uh, a project could have up to 100 sheets. So imagine if you would have to quickly change these views, how much amount of productivity you can gain through this feature. All right. So moving to probably uh, one of the most interesting topics, uh, heading into the new world, cloud and data is what is considered as the fuel for today and tomorrow. And data, harnessing data will become more, more and more important as we move into uh, the next generation of uh, BIM workflows. So in your current 2023 Revit, uh, data exchanges have significantly improved. So there is this ability to share relevant data with multiple stakeholders across multiple applications and one of the most significant challenges that we see that our industry faces today. Hence, Autodesk developed data exchanges, data exchanges to help solve these challenges. It is a neutral, secure subset of model data that can be shared with many downstream apps. Uh, it opens doors to streamlined automation workflows and uh, Revit 2023 will allow you to create data exchanges by first publishing a Revit file uh, along with a set of 3D views to Autodesk Docs, uh, which is part of the AC collection for all the users. The data contained with each published 3D view can be tailored to the information needs of any specific discipline or trade. From here, you can create an exchange by uh, selecting, uh, just a second. Hey, no mark, I just need two minutes to bring my charger. So just give me two minutes, huh? sorry. So once more uh, for the raffle draw, we're encouraging everyone to uh, just share my screen. Once more, we're encouraging everyone to register and afford the certificate of event participation. So that is tied to this uh, registration form as well. Also, I just made a quick search for those who are not yet uh, using Revit in their school. So I made a quick search for the jobs available, available for Revit in the Philippines. So numerous. Okay, so once more requesting everyone to, yeah, please connect with me in LinkedIn. Before this live stream ends, I'll be sharing this course uh, for you to learn Revit. Okay, so, yep, bringing back uh, Sagar. Yep, so sorry for that. I actually moved my room, right, to, it's a bit late here, so the services could be down sometimes. So I'm just going to, 
replay this portion of data exchanges. Okay. I'm audible, right? Absolutely. Okay, fine. Perfect. So, all right. So we are looking into this data exchange, which uh, enables you to publish a Revit file along with the set of 3D views uh, to Autodesk Docs and the data contained within each published uh, 3D view can be tailored to the information needs of any specific discipline or trade as well. From here, you can create an exchange by selecting a published view and sharing it with the stakeholder in a neutral format. Remember, neutral format. Okay. And once the data exchange is created, this data exchange is automatically updated when the file is republished. So let's say, for example, for DFMA, Revit to Inventor, using Revit and Inventor, you can use data exchanges to enable a seamless design to manufacturing workflow. Right? Here you can see this uh, steel shed. A view published from Revit can be shared as a data exchange from Docs and collaborators working in Inventor can load the exchange into an Inventor assembly and is used as a reference for a more detailed fabrication model. So the, when, when the Revit model is republished, the data exchange associated with the view can be pulled into Inventor to ensure the design team is coordinated. So in terms of business intelligence, Revit to Microsoft Power Automate, uh, which is coming soon, you can also use data exchanges to build a connection between Revit and Microsoft Power Automate. Uh, this enables the connector for Power Automate in Autodesk Docs uh, and automated workflows that integrate data from the exchange with third-party apps. For example, you can automatically generate a bill of materials in Excel or send it out to report, the, report it to business executives. So these examples illustrate the power of automation enabled by data exchanges, still we are just starting to unveil their potential and you will see a lot of this in the upcoming versions and this will be enhanced. And the most important thing to note over here is that Autodesk Construction Cloud today connects with 175 APIs, unique construction softwares, which are non-Autodesk softwares. Uh, it could be Microsoft Exchange or it could be any other like DocuSign, or it could be a business intelligence software. And this is one of the critical things to note is that all the Autodesk users, when they use Construction Cloud or Docs, there's a neutral uh, format which uses the Forge Forge engine. I think many of you might be aware of Forge. It, it uses a derivative API, which uh, uses a common data platform to, to derive information from. And that's really going to be the future of how data will be exchanged with the different uh, stakeholders in the project. All right. So we also launched Parameter Service. This is also a game changer for, for many workflows, especially for large projects with multiple equipments, multiple families, and the Parameter Service uh, technology. So let's just quickly have a look at that. Okay, the parameter service is a technology preview that allows you to manage parameters libraries using the Autodesk Construction Cloud. Uh, using the parameter service, you can search for parameters and pull them in bulk into your Revit models. All parameters are integrated directly into the Autodesk Construction Cloud platform and parameters can be created by selecting the new parameter button you can require you are required to fill in the name, discipline, value, and so on, and the properties palette group. And you can select at least one of the default categories for the parameter and specify whether it should be a type of an instance parameter. You can also leverage your existing share parameter files if you have them. And from Revit, you can then launch the parameter service by navigating to manage parameter service in the ribbon tab. And here you can perform all parameter management activities. You can search for parameters, filter a view, and add, add parameters to your Revit models. Parameters can be added to the service by uploading an existing shared parameters file, similarly to the cloud. 
You may also upload parameters from Active Revit file or create parameters manually. So before you import parameters into a Revit project, you will need to set their category, right? Uh, in the service where you are, what, what you're using. So that is quite important. You have to set their category. So what is the particular category? And you can click on the parameter to open its details, windows, uh, then change its category, binding and property palette group as well. Now you can, in Revit, you can add parameters from the parameter service in any location where shared parameters can be used. So simply select add from service to launch the parameter service. Then select one or more parameters to use and click and add to the Revit model button. So parameters loaded from this service can be managed in the same way as any other shared parameter. So this is going to be quite useful, especially when adding multiple parameters and sharing them across multiple projects. You're able to use this and manage your libraries more efficiently across various projects and locations using this unified parameter service. All right. So uh, there has been a significant sort of a update in terms of uh, how you might want to reinstate a previous version, right? So this is uh, something which is called as a non-destructive model rollback or Revit cloud models. Again, moving into the data and platform-based uh, AEC economy, right? Platform-based, again, I repeat, the future of collaboration will be a platform-based collaboration where everybody can collaborate with different data models. So to have a look at this service, uh, let's understand. You can manage cloud models in Revit home screen. You can now force a work set relinquish on cloud models from the Revit home screen. Now, this is something uh, you remember last account for your Revit cloud models. Then cloud models for Revit is a capability that allows you to restore, hmm, to, re uh, to, to store and access non-work shared Revit models on the Autodesk Construction Cloud or BIM 360. In uh, Revit 2023, when you decide to save your project on the cloud, the last used account is remembered, right? It is remembered and displayed in the Save as Cloud Model dialog box. Now, this enhancement will improve your productivity by help helping you quickly find recently accessed cloud accounts and when saving these Revit cloud models. Now, the non-destructive model rollback for Revit cloud models uh, in previous releases of Revit, uh, rolling back a cloud model to a previous version was not possible, but now it is possible. So that's something which has been improved significantly for the cloud rollback. All right, now this is something which uh, is an example that I would like to share, uh, which uses our inventor functionality and takes the inventor model, uh, the fabricatable assembly model makes it parametric and takes it to Revit. For example, over here, we're using the iLogic service to, to create a parametric railing fabrication model in Inventor. And this detailed model, you can look at the parameters at the back end. And the, there, there are two types of models which contains the BIM information. And it also uh, contains the fabrication information, which is the master model. Then you can publish this model as a template. And then using the logic, the constraint, you can create some Booleans, loops, add some uh, mathematical, let's say, integrations into this, add variables. For example, my depth is always greater than my width, something like that, right? And if these Booleans are added, then your design will be restricted such that your depth is always greater than your width. And then you can publish together with this logic right and when you open this in the autodesk viewer and let's say here you want to change your depth to let's say uh, 4000 yeah and 4000 is always uh, more right then you can see that the depth and the width ratio if it is not matched it's not going to accept 
So in this case now, it's 3000, so it accepts, right? And the width, uh, let's change that to 4000, then it accepts. And that model, you can directly launch from Revit and you can insert that balcony fabrication model as a BIM model inside your project and directly place it. And that's beautiful. So here, if I want to uh, have different variations imported, let's say I want to change the value and import another type of a balcony, I can import multiple sizes with the same configuration, same material, same railing type, same glass type, same fitting, but only the size variation is there, right? So I change, let's say in this case, I change the width to 2000 and the depth to 1500. And I can again generate this, see? So it generates various configurations. And then I can use this again and again and again. And this is beautiful. This, this is enabling the design to manufacturing workflows and taking it to the next level, integrating into BIM. And like that, I can design the whole facade, have my balconies designed in there and post that I can even share this project with others and uh, you can create a scope of work, for example, for manufacturing. So let's say I have these four types of balconies and now I want to send them for manufacturing. I can create shop drawings right on the BIM 360 or the Autodesk construction cloud. Uh, it then extracts the inventor shop fabrication drawings, creates my bill of materials, right? And uh, this is the Excel sheet that contains all the information. It creates the IPT file, the IAM file, the inventor assembly file, the inventor part file, and it creates the fabrication drawings all at once using the power of inventor, right? You're designing your, 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 your manufacturing element assembly in inventor, converting it as a BIM model, inserting it in Revit, using it as part of your design, so imagine how uh, fabricators and subcontractors can now participate in your workflows. All right, so from here, we move to the last part of our session. And then after I think 10 minutes or so, we will move into questions and answers if there are any on that, okay? So awesome. the evolution of design collaboration, actually this is my favorite topic because this uh, is really an evolution and it's important that people uh, understand it, students understand it, that how it has evolved, right? So we have taken baby steps, right? From the Neanderthal man, local work sharing was introduced when, when Revit work sharing came in. It was limited to your local network. It was when the apes existed and then Revit server was born. We had multi-site work sharing. Uh, which was restricted with the inside company firewall. And we slowly learned to get up from there. And then collaboration for Revit was launched. And this really changed the game. Here is where we are now moving into the next gen. Cloud work sharing has been enabled and high trust environment has been created between teams. Now here I'm really seeing that I'm, I'm now growing and able to walk from here. And I think the years are not really known, but you can see how the evolution has happened in the last 15 years or so and how Autodesk Revit collaboration has changed. And, to, and today, uh, let's say in 2016 uh, or so, this BIM 360 design collaboration, after it was, then it matured into 2018. And this is really the next generation of cloud collaboration where we learn to stand straight and walk straight which is your BIM 360 design collaboration. And now we are here in 2021, 2022, where AI machine learning data platform is governing and the connected data platform has been evolved. And here model coordination has been added to the platform. Advanced project analytics has also been added to the platform. And here your BIM 360 design and your BIM 360 coordinate will now combine into your BIM Collaborate Pro. And this is really the next generation of collaboration. So this is, if, if this was BIM 360 design, 
we have actually added the BIM 360 coordinate, which is model coordination. And on the Autodesk Construction Cloud, we have BIM Collaborate Pro, which is the next generation of collaboration platform for designers, which enables you to access Autodesk Docs, which has 50 plus file formats, which supports 50 plus file formats, robust permissions, 2D and 3D version comparison, issues and markups. Then we support Revit Cloud work sharing, taking it to the next level, anytime, anywhere, Revit collaboration and controlled cloud work sharing and design collaboration, which includes set publishing, package review and distribution of drawings and consumption of packages for architecture, structure, MEP, civil, and so on. Virtual version comparison was introduced and design issues can also be managed. Further, model coordination in BIM Collaborate Pro enables automated clash detection on the cloud, automated clash grouping, clash analysis, and coordination issues have been enhanced. So this is a beautiful platform for the next generation of designers and everybody should take advantage of this platform. And it's anytime, anywhere. So you don't have to be in the office. You could be anywhere. You could be working from Bali or Bangkok or Hawaii or anywhere. It doesn't matter. As long as you have a good internet connection, you're always connected. And this will enable you to do everything A to Z. So we have added uh, team issues um, and collaboration issue management has been enhanced very significantly uh, bridge projects has been added where you can now bridge the information from one CD to another CD. This can be explored further. So have a look at this as well. Uh, collaboration uh, changes, which includes the watch group. The watch group has been added. So you can actually create a specific set of elements and you can always keep an eye on only those per set of elements. For example, I am only interested in zone one MEP elements. And every time there is a model or a design change, I only want to know how many elements were added, how many were modified, how many were deleted for a specific set of elements within your Revit models for specific versions, right? This is awesome, right? I'm only concerned about doors. I'm only concerned about concrete round columns. Show me what happened in the last two versions, three versions, and how the model changed from here. So this is something which was added. It's called as the collaboration uh, watch groups. Now, I'll just quickly, for, for people who, who probably are not aware of BIM Collaborate Pro as a platform, or who have never used uh, BIM 360 design. Oh, there's some issue with the video. Okay, I mean, I might. What I'll do is I'll play that from my computer. Huh? Just give me a second. I'll play that from my computer directly. Okay, so let's look at a specific workflow. And that is, so I'll just share one workflow, but there are multiple BIM Collaborate Pro workflows that can be enabled. So sharing design changes in BIM Collaborate Pro. So first, for example, you would uh, be able to log into your docs. In your docs, you have design collaboration module. In your design collaboration module, you can see the packages which are shared. And let's say you're looking at the architectural packages. And within the architectural packages, uh, you should be able to look at the, let's say if you receive the MEP and the structure package at the same time, and you want to communicate any design change, you should be able to enable and consume that package and look at what has changed. So you create this new package, right? And you name it uh, architecture 95%. And you can claim that walls have been modified by two feet and you can communicate this design change straight to all the teams after doing so. 
So here, for example, you can visualize your changes, right? And you can see that zero were added, zero were removed, and 30 elements were modified, which were walls and floors and doors. So this is how you really communicate your design changes. Uh, let's look at reviewing these changes, right? So reviewing these changes is also something which is critical. So BIM Collaborate Pro will enable you to review design changes. And in a similar way, the packages are available as a nice bar diagram on the top. So here, for example, you can look at, uh, let's say this architectural package, which was issued at a particular date and so let's say 90%, then you are exploring the changes that have taken place. And here you can look at the earlier package and the new package, and you can show the changes in the model and you can decide to consume this package. This design package can be consumed and hence it can be launched for further use or collaborate between different disciplines. You can also manage these links and publish them through your Revit as well. So over here, for example, we can see what changed and you can actually start moving these wall. Let's say you move this wall and you came back and refresh the screen. You can actually now consume and create a new package and look at this design change. Similarly, you can enable automated clash detection. Now automated uh, clash detection is something which uh, will be quite critical especially when you don't model with a lot of hygiene. It's important that if there are clashes getting created due to wrong modeling, that also needs to be rectified and corrected, right? So we don't want wrong modeling to happen. So automated class detection could also be part of the you know, authoring process. So you can create a coordination space, such as coordination MEP versus structure, uh, select uh, the coordination reviews folder. In the coordination review folder, you can now uh, add, you can identify and have these clashes closed over there. So for example, you can see the roughly around uh, 2,235. So all of these were enabled and you created this new group that you could now start reviewing these clashes, right? And you can decide to either create an issue or ignore it or just move ahead with the clash. So for every clash, you can directly assign it to a specific person. You can give him a due date and you can move forward from here to, to enable the clash assignment and the process further. You can move it further. All right. So now we will look into issues management. So issues management as part of the BIM Collaborate Pro can also be very essential to your workflows. So all the issues that get created or get identified as part of a clash uh, can then be reviewed. So let's say you're creating this issue. This new issue has been created and you are able to manage these issues through the Revit issues add-in. So there's an issues add-in inside Revit that connects with your construction cloud and it takes you right into the place where this issue originated or was identified. And you can immediately decide to correct this and change, uh, do the clash correction and review it back, right? Similarly, you can also connect this to your Navisworks models as well. So here you can see, you can review the same issue or manage it also through the uh, Navisworks issues as well. So that's how you can combine Revit, Navisworks, and also Autodesk Construction Cloud together. So last but not the least, uh, we can look at Project Insight. So Insight is where the analytics is. So you have all the data, you have the models, how about understanding uh, through a dashboard, right? So this is your dashboard, your personal dashboard or your project dashboard, where you can create a risk dashboard, RFI dashboard. You can identify the high risk issues and also create your own dashboard using 
various uh, cards. We have a card library. You can move, customize, and beautifully uh, also look at different cards. For example, over here, you can choose uh, some partner cards. Again, as I mentioned, 175 API integrations are part of Autodesk Construction Cloud. So create your dashboards, create reports, connect to data, uh, create templates, uh, submittals, RFIs, all in one platform with the connected BIM information, not isolated. There are softwares out there which are data management platforms, but they are not connected to your BIM, which is very important because project management and data management cannot run in isolation without BIM. You need a connected data platform and not a disconnected project management platform. Therefore, Autodesk Construction Cloud is the next generation of collaboration, data management, construction management, and project management. So with this, uh, I come to an end. And if, if, if you'd like to look at all the new features, feel free to go to this link and look at all the new features of the Revit 2023. There are probably more than 100 over new features that have been added, as you can see here, uh, roughly 27, again, 60, 82. So roughly around 100 features that are enabling the next generation of design workflows. And uh, from here, I would pass it back to Nomark. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Sagar. So that for those who has friends wondering what Revit is, uh, this is absolutely a great resource uh, for you to forward. This, uh, I guess, the the replay of this live stream. So it tells you really about all uh, the capabilities. Uh, of a Revit. I guess our first uh, question for Sagar is uh, someone is asking how can we use Revit for lead certification of buildings? Any idea on that? Yeah, sure. So uh, there are multiple ways to do this. Uh, one of the ways is to use our project insight. The insight tool in Revit is quite useful to get uh, results, uh, graphs, and outputs about the, let's say, for example, your embedded carbon or also related to solar and daylight consumption, heat load analysis, and uh, reports of how much heat load is taken into a particular building. So Insight is the module that you must look at. Insight is part of your um, Revit, but it requires cloud connection for that. You would have to use the cloud to uh, do the analysis and run the reports in Insight. Yep. Uh, someone is asking here for uh, careers. Uh, what country uh, is uh, Revit mostly in demand? Well, <laughs> it's, it's worldwide. <laughs> so it's worldwide. Uh, well, Revit, uh, as we know, is the most popular BIM tool. Almost 80% of BIM users, more than 80, are Revit users. Uh, popular, I would say, ASEAN, India, uh, Australia, New Zealand, uh, of course, US, uh, UK as well, Europe, some parts, and uh, Canada. Yeah, so it's all over the world. To be honest, Revit is uh, all over the world. And if I'm not mistaken, there are more than 20 million users of Revit. Wow. Maybe, maybe more because in total, we have more than 100 million users for all the products. But Revit and Civil 3D being the most commonly used yeah. together, they might easily be 40 million altogether. Yeah. That's huge. Uh, someone's yeah. asking here for the absolute beginners, any educational uh, resources or links you can uh, share for them to check out? Um, well, Autodesk, uh, YouTube. <laughs> Go to YouTube. <laughs> I'm telling you, just type in Revit for Beginners in YouTube and you'll find so much. My, um, Revit Learning Revit is actually now quite simple because there's the people like you uh, and 
on YouTube, you can find tons of resources. There are so many BIM gurus in every <laughs> region. A, a, like, like in ANZ, we have an Aussie BIM guru. You can go to his website and learn. There's another guy, uh, Howard Wazak. Uh, there, is a, there are many Indian BIM gurus, uh, a lot of Malaysian BIM gurus. There are BIM gurus in all places. If you type in, go to the YouTube <laughs> channel, you'll find many BIM gurus. Yeah. Uh, someone's asking if we have a certification exam for Revit. Yes, of course. Yes. Uh, you, can, you can go online and just type in Revit uh, certification, Revit for architects, Revit for MEP, mechanical specific, electrical specific, structure specific, coordination, and uh, thing it it costs like two fifty dollars or something to get one certificate. It's quite uh, good to have a certificate. Uh, yeah, so you can become a Revit uh, authorized trainer also. So there is a lot of certification opportunities out there. Yeah. Uh, here's uh, ask here's someone asking for career advice. Uh, what's your advice for those? Um, pursuing to become a BIM manager? Focus on data, focus on analytics, uh, because BIM authoring has been there for the last 15, 20 years. And Revit has grown into a big beast that authors yeah. and collects data. But what is important for the future is to explore the generative design workflows, the Power BI workflows. Uh, it, becoming a good BIM manager is about harnessing the data uh, communicating with different team, um, different disciplines, different teams to be able to manage your models, uh, manage the consistency of the models, manage warnings. And yeah, uh, change management is one of the key things. And for this, analytics is important. And hence, you should learn an analytical tool that will give you uh, these capabilities to read the information and convey it to others. Yeah, I guess uh, this would be my uh, last question for Sagar. Uh, how do you see uh, Revit and BIM in general, let's say, uh, 10 years from now? 10 years from now? I, in I, your okay. own point of view, how you see this, things? This, yeah, my, my, my opinion is no Revit, right or wrong. Might, Revit might become a fully cloud product. Yeah, It might happen. I, I'm, I'm also seeing it. Because uh, as we go into, okay, I, I would compare it to manufacturing in, in, as the building industry moves towards more manufacturing related processes, uh, it might happen in 15, 20 years, but in 10 yeah. years, we might see more, more automation. By default, there will be so many Dynamo scripts embedded in Revit, like you don't have to create them. So whatever workflow yeah. today you have to create through visual programming, it might, it will already be in there, right? So a lot of automation will be embedded and it will be fully automated. In my opinion, automation will be the next uh, step for Revit. And AI machine learning, which you have already started seeing, propagation for Reba, uh, you might see propagation for dough properties, propagation for fire-based doughs, replacement, so many possibilities are there. It's it's in, it's 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 going to the next level through Dynamo and Project Refinery. Yeah. Yeah. So take for those who are still with us, take note of that. Uh, yeah, I I agree on that with with everything cloud AI machine learning. Definitely. Yeah, uh, what what I did two years ago was I learned I I took a course. It was a six-month course through the National University of Singapore, and I learned Python. It was difficult in the beginning, but after two, three weeks, you start understanding this prescriptive analytics, descriptive uh, analytics. Then you have Codec, which is cognitive intelligence. For the next generation of designers, it's not just about designing spaces. It is about harnessing and understanding how data can help them to design and drive these design decisions faster. So focus on those skills. Then it will be much uh, more, it will be a, a fruitful journey in that case. Yeah. For those who are not familiar with Sagar, highly <laughs> suggesting you check out uh, 
his experiences have been to through a lot of uh, companies definitely and i agree uh when you're into design i guess programming coding really is there knocking on your door you need to <laughs> you need to yeah like i've i've been using things. since 2008 uh i was a generative components user then i was a grasshopper user because dynamo only came in 2013 then uh, we were always looking for how to connect computational design and to bim which was not possible until dynamo came when dynamo came you could directly start sending and reading data through the bim elements and uh, that really has evolved greatly in, uh, into the current uh, times Yeah. So with that in mind, uh thank you so much, uh, Sagar. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. I'm going to be pasting down the link to his uh, LinkedIn profile. So if ever you have questions uh of course with regards to AEC, uh feel free to uh reach reach out to him. And uh yeah, once more, Sagar, thank you so much. Uh hoping we thank can you. have a probably Have next Have a nice weekend everybody. <laughs> Thank you. As promised, uh highly suggesting you connect with me in LinkedIn if ever you have uh, questions, comments and suggestions for our uh, future live stream and I'm going to be sharing this course now. So course shared, uh, highly suggesting as well you download uh, the linkedin learning uh application so with that uh once more thank you so much everyone and uh, see you in our communities if you want to level up your uh re your renders for revit join us in enscape users worldwide join our revit community and of course our bim community in uh Facebook. So once more, thank you so much. We hope we have been a blessing. We hope you learned uh, something new and uh, see you next time on our next uh BIM Worldwide and Autodesk Community live stream. Once more, thank you so much.